Hello everyone and welcome to episode 25 of SSTO Space Program and today after two rather large colonization missions that we have initiated in two past videos we will be going back to the route slightly because first of all we have some problems to solve as you know some of our equipment is overheating and uh, therefore we need to find a fix for that and uh, what better place to do it than here close to Kerbin. So today we will be sending a modified mining station to the moon and we will do it in a brand new orbital deploy vehicle, lunar orbital deploy vehicle actually that we've designed specifically for this mission so let's jump right into it so it turns out to fix our existing mining stations that we have deployed on Duna the only thing that we need to do is to add one large radiator on the top and it should be all right um, I also decided to add a little bit of flavor to them and uh, added some lights that will go on as station modules are deployed so there's one for the power one for the heating the drills are deployed and the cherry lights goes on and when the drills start drilling the red <laughs> light appears as well and as you can see nothing is overheating right now we can mine the dirt or whatever it is from the um, runway without overheating and uh, yeah the station is working fine so with this thing settled um, I decided that we can send this particular station to the moon but it wasn't all so easy and <laughs> KSP was showing its best at the time and uh, yeah, we'll see what happened, but the heating problems didn't end there. Nevertheless, um, to do that, I thought that we can go back a little bit to the roots and uh, design a new SSTO that would carry the payload to the orbit of the moon. The station, as you know, can land on its own, and um, we don't need this vehicle to be able to land on the moon just to get into orbit. And then the station will land on its own. Um, to show you how it was built, I decided that I will show you the reverse time lapse of how this vehicle is disassembled. And as you can see, we will be using fairings as a cargo base because, well, the station does not fit into any. And, uh, well, and that was the only solution we could use. And once the vehicle was ready, the only thing that we needed to do was to find a right landing spot for our mining station. And at that point I changed my mind and decided that this station will be mining minerals because minerals are one of many resources that you can use to fabricate fertilizer in situ and our Munar outpost has absolutely no means of resupplying itself with fertilizer and we are running out of fertilizer on that outpost. So unless you would like to send another shipment from Kerbin, we need a um, we need a way to actually make some fertilizer on the moon. So we went with minerals. As you can see, our station is neatly packed in the cargo bay and the uh, SSTO is looking <laughs> rather curable, I would say, with all this big fairing in, in the front. But hey, it's uh, it's working and uh, yeah, the vehicle turned out to be relatively successful and um, it has a cargo capacity or a payload capacity to um, Munar orbit of uh, a bit over 30 tons and uh, enough Delta V to get there and back with that payload um, safely to Kerbin so um, so yeah it's a uh, it's quite nice vehicle it flies very well it is also really low on part count in comparison to uh, my other more uh, monstrous creations and in general it's a um, relatively fun to fly and uh, medium-sized plane although um, maybe maybe by some other people's standards this would be a large plane but uh, in comparison to what you saw uh, on my channel, that's uh, that's, uh, that's a medium-sized plane, but it had one major flaw, as you could see uh, during the fairing deployment. Uh, one of the engines um, in our mining station uh, blew off, and this is why I really don't like clamshell um, deploy deploying uh, fairings in uh, this kind of closed configuration. Uh, well, I didn't cancel the mission at this point, uh, partly because we could still probably land on the moon and uh, partly because it's, you know, a little bit more challenging to actually fly with uh, whatever mishaps will happen to you. And uh, yeah, the only thing that we need to remember to do is to change the fairing deployment from clamshell to confetti just to be on the safer side of things. But uh, nevertheless, we made it into orbit safely with enough fuel to get into lunar orbit and back and uh, after getting into right position the only thing that we needed to do was to execute an insertion burn but uh, before we go into that there's also one thing that i haven't told you and i'm sure that more observant of you have noticed that already that this vehicle is in fact a drone ship it's uh, has no crew capacity and is completely automated i mean in a sense that um it has no pilots and it's controlled by a probe and we have a larger probe core in the front and um, yeah so 
so so that's there is that and uh now two reasons for it actually um one is that because of this setup our cargo capacity can be slightly higher and the b is that m most of the competent um kerbals that i had are uh, already sent somewhere on some missions and i really don't want to recruit any new pilots just to do this mundane kind of missions and uh yeah so 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 i went with a drone ship and also drone ships aren't something that i don't really do very often uh, our trip to the moon was relatively standard so there is nothing to talk about there and once we were in orbit safely our um, mining station was detached and um obviously i needed to activate the engines and uh because of the <laughs> previous mishap i uh had to disable one to kind of have the uh, thrust vector in line with the center of mass more or less and once this was done the next step in our journey was finding a right landing spot and it turned out that in the middle of the crater where our base was and that is if i remember correctly the northeast crater even if it seems to be on the central side of the moon um had the largest mineral deposits on the entire month and that was great that was great it's close to our base so if anything happens we can always send some engineer to fix things and uh it's a great spot to test the uh, you know the landing capabilities of our station and as you can see we had a rather bumpy landing but thanks to those sturdy legs that come with the um mining uh, version of one of the rover dude mods um that was still successful and here we are landed on the moon and guess what? We run into another problem. As it turns out, mineral drills somehow consume four times um, as much electricity as almost all the others. And uh, we are not overheating, so that's great, but uh, <laughs> we don't have enough power. You might also have noticed that this station has a slightly different setup. It has, um, instead of this one deployable medium-sized radiator it has um, three other radiators and one of them is hidden inside uh, the shell where uh, the uh, nuclear reactor is and this is because i've noticed that those deployable uh, thermal control systems kind of do not work really well with time warp and they they've proven to be quite buggy in the current state of things but well what can we do? So the next step that uh, I decided to take was to land our um, a new drone SSTO back on Kerbin and actually send it back to KC because, well, we weren't so lucky today and uh, there are still problems with those mining stations. I mean, uh, heating solved, kind of. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but we have some power shortages. So at least we can recover our launch vehicle or um, yeah, our SSTO and get some money back. And um, yeah, as you can see, the vehicle was um, fairly stable. It was also designed in such a way that um, the center of mass is almost not moving. But it had another heating problem, as you can see. For uh, whatever reason, without the cockpit, the front of the ship was overheating really, really badly. So um, just to be on the safer side of things, I decided that we will be re-entering re using the maximum drag. So the control, of course, of your orbit when uh, I mean or, or should I say aero braking um, it was a bit less controlled than usual and um, and we had to actually use our engines to deorbit ourselves in a proper orientation to land on KC but apart from that uh, nothing exceptionally interesting happened uh, we still had some fuel left and the ship was flying really well and it was very stable I would say even a little bit too responsive um, so I had to pump some uh, excess oxidizer what, that we still have uh, left to the front of the ship just to make it a little bit more nose heavy and then we had the textbook landing did you see that touchdown <laughs> I was so proud of it and here we are back on the runway so yeah so our vehicle is relatively successful remember the clamshell deploying fairings that we don't really like with this type of configuration so I decided that uh, we will change that right now just to be on the safer side of things so the vehicle that you will find in the description if you would like to use it uh, should have that fixed already and you can deploy whatever it is that you are going to deploy in the uh, lunar orbit uh, safely and then I decided to take a look at what is the power generation and power requirements for different drills and it turns out that there are some types of drill heads that are used by this drill that we are using the uh, automated drill that is the medium sized that use um, much more electricity than, than the others and minerals apparently are one of those um, power hungry types 
and uh, yeah, I kind of missed that. I must admit that was that was really really strange um, that I didn't look into that. And um, I must say that uh, some of the numbers did not add up for me because um, it is said that per drill head is using 40 electricity, 40 electric charge, or 200. That simply does not add up for me. So either that's 40 di divided by the amount of drill heads that we have, or uh, not. I don't know, but. I also decided to take another look at our Duna mining stations, and guess what happened? They, um, none of those stations had uh, power shortage problems, but also they stopped overheating. Nothing was changed, I don't know, I haven't updated my KSP, I haven't updated the mods, and uh, <laughs> none of the stations that we had deployed uh, are overheating now and before they were and I had to disable one of the drills and that they were the heaters were only kind of deal with uh, only one drill and the nuclear reactor and now um, both drills are operating you know at maximum capacity and uh, nothing's overheating so I really don't know what is going on and um, I've also noticed that uh, time warping kind of changes how the temperature is um, raising and uh, I don't really understand that and and sometimes exiting from the on-rails time warp um, to kind of real-time physics is uh, causing the uh, some of the core temperature for um, some modules to spike to very high numbers. Like the highest I saw was about 10,000 Kelvin, which is really weird. And that happened only on the exit of the time warp. But apart from that, it seems like our uh, Duna mining station do not require fixing at all, which is um, surprising, to say the least. And none of the four that we've been, I've looked into require fixing. So um, after this was done, I had a hunch and I decided that I'll look into our uh, pole outpost. And guess what? This outpost is not overheating anymore. It was overheating before, but now it's not. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why this happens. And uh, as I said, I haven't changed my uh, MKS version. I haven't changed my KSP version. I haven't changed anything. And it's not overheating anymore. So I decided that uh, that's great news and probably our um, Julian system colonists won't be starving anytime soon because then <laughs> now they can at least pick the fertilizer from the surface of Paul. So that's great for them. But I really would like to understand why this happens and what is causing this. But um, as I said, we still had some power shortage problems and I can't really fit larger nuclear reactors in those mining stations. So. So um, I don't know, because the great thing about this design is that you can completely swap the resources they are mining in situ. So if you decide that you don't longer need a station that is, for example, uh, designed to mine the chemicals, you can send an engineer with a surplus of um, specialized parts and just change the station to mine something else. So having a uh, larger power supply would be an overkill for almost everything apart for a few selected resources. and. Um, for those resources you just cannot mine at full capacity so i haven't really decided what to do anyway this will be all for this video and i would like to thank you very much for watching and i hope that you've enjoyed and uh, if you have any ideas what is causing this heating problems please do let me know in the comment section if you have any other questions please do write them down as well i would also like to thank another aperture joe Luff and Sharax and all my patrons on patreon for continuous support you guys are amazing and your support is very much needed so if you enjoyed this video please consider liking it if you are new to my channel please consider subscribing my name is mark frim and i will see you next time